I got a big mouth, you know, I talk from my heart, I'm real, you know what I'm saying, whatever comes, comes. But my controversy, probably. And it's not my fault. I'm trying to find my way in the world. You know, I'm trying to be somebody instead of just make money off everybody. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I go down paths that haven't been traveled before, and I usually mess up. But I learn. You know what I'm saying? I come back stronger. You know, I'm not talking ignorant. You know what I'm saying? So I obviously put thought into what I do. The karma, everything that you do bad comes back to me. So anything that I'm doing that's bad, I'm going to have to suffer for. But in my heart, I think what I'm doing is right. You know what I mean? And I think heaven is just when you sleep, you sleep with a good conscience. You don't have nightmares. Good hell is What's going on, everyone? I'm so happy you decided to join me on this journey called Podcast Life. We will be discussing topics like celebrity gossip, life lesson, politics, and etc. This is a judge-free zone. Think of me as that homegirl that is so down to earth that you feel like you've been knowing for years. Remember, over here at the Boomerang Effect, the motto is never judge a book by its cover before opening it up and reading it and remember it's okay to agree to disagree just stand on what you're saying got it period please like comment share give feedback anything to help this podcast grow because it is a voice for the people so love peace and unity What's going on, everyone? It is your girl, Queen Quee, and this is the Boomerang Effect Hot Topics. Let's jump right on into it. Caitlyn Jenner, better known as Bruce Jenner, before his transition into becoming a woman. Caitlyn Jenner officially files for paperwork to run for the governor of California. After weeks of rumors swirling, Caitlyn Jenner is officially running for the governor of California. In a tweet, she announced it that her paperwork is filed and that she is ready to take on Governor Newsom for the spot. I am a proven winner and the only outsider who can put an end to Gavin Newsom Reputation is me. Ooh, pressure. <laughs> so, you know, he, he, I mean, I'm so sorry, y'all. It's because, you know, we have to dress people as is. Uh, she is definitely ready to get down to the bottom of a lot of stuff. So, you guys, what is your opinion on the situation of? Caitlyn Jenner running for uh, for governor. My opinion, I was looking at different type of, you know, comments and stuff like that. And I was looking and I was just like, okay, what do people think? And of course, Black Twitter was clowning. Some people were just like, how can she want to run for governor and try to run a whole city or whatever in a state when she could not even run her household? She was undecided about her uh, household. Ouch. Oh, it's going to get very dirty. People was pulling out the claws. Uh, my opinion about the situation that I've seen a lot of people were saying also is that I really want, well, first of all, I don't stay in California, so I really don't care. But you definitely have to put people in position that is experienced and that does not want attention. We do not need another person to, uh, in office, in any office, to basically get a position just because they're trying something new, just because they want to sit up here and, you know, oh, okay, well, I didn't did it all, or I didn't want this. This is a challenge for me. Like how Kanye West was trying to run for president. Yes, he might honestly had some good points and value, but at the end of the day, this is nothing to be taken lightly. So I just hope that whatever decision, you know, as far as like this city decides to do it, I hope it won't be like a popularity type of thing or a contest and, oh, that's Bruce, you know, that used to be Bruce Jenner or, you know, Kaylin Jenner or I'm going to support them because they're a reality TV show instead of I'm going to support this person because they're actually making a lot of things. I think a lot of all that office and stuff like that is rigged. I always didn't thought it was rigged. That's the reason why when it comes down to voting, it's so undecided and so many people are undecided because you have people that's running that is not qualified. And you have people that have actually put in the work, that have put in the time, have done all they could just for a reality TV star or athlete or somebody like that to decide one particular day that they want to run for governor. So I'm not going to underestimate 
Kaylin Jenner, when it comes down to the potential she might have, because we never know, we might be surprised. But another thing some people made a good point about is that, first of all, you're running for governor, but you're running as a Republican. And, you know, everybody know Republican is very conservative and all that type of conservative and everything. And you was a big Donald Trump you see what I'm saying, like fan. So a lot of people is kind of looking at him sideways. I mean, her, I'm so sorry, once again. They are looking at her sideways because at the end of the day, it's like, wait a minute, how can you sit up here and run for a whole party that's considered to be conservative that do not even accept your kind, do not even accept the things that you have done and tried to transition into. So you're telling me that you're going to run for this same party that is against that? So they're already looking at, at her as a hypocrite because it's kind of like, you can't sit up here and tell me that the people that is voting are not even trying to give transgenders rights and stuff like that you gonna turn around and run for that whole party so we'll definitely see how that'll turn out i would love to hear you guys opinion on the situation do you think that kaylin jenner will be a great governor or do you feel like that, that people do anything for clout like it could just be you know another way to put her name out there and to get uh her to to get you know what I'm saying more recognition because i do feel like a lot of her hype has died down. Of course, she came out and she like let it be known about different situations and stuff like that or in the transition part, but that has really kind of died down. And so, uh, therefore, I don't know if this is another way to put it out there that she is still very much so relevant and she can still make a, a difference and make history because i want to say bruce jenner was a major athlete back in the day like with a real world record breaking and etc so yeah this could just be another challenge to kind of get out there and put out there so we shall see people we shall see how this turns out so be on the lookout. Give me your opinion about what you think about that. Next up is I want to talk about the rapper. It's a rapper named Miami uh, from the City Girls. And I think I talked about her on another podcast. But this particular uh, podcast, she is in the headlines because she was letting people know that she is tired of people calling her by her first name in public. She is tired of y'all calling her by her government name. And she would like for you guys to keep calling her by her rap name, especially when she don't know you like that. She say it's very weird and scary. And I did want to talk about this is because then how do you guys feel about pe calling people by their nickname or calling them by their government name? Do you feel like that uh, it could be disrespectful or it's too personal to call people by their government name? Now, me personally, I have a long name. I have every alphabet in the letter. So so I don't like my name and it's not, it's, it's, I really, I had to think about why I don't like my name and it's kind of just really because it's long and I'm just so used to people calling me like growing up people to this day still call me queen. I just put an E-N on the end, but you know, I go by queen or queen and I have people call me that to this day. I probably rarely <clears throat> I probably rarely hear my first name, which is crazy, but I rarely hear my first name. So if somebody was to call me my first name, it most likely have to be if I'm in a meeting, if I'm being introduced to someone that it could be just very important, or if my mama mad at me. That's the only time I probably heard my my government name. So she was very upset because fans kept calling her Carisha, you know what I'm saying, which is her government name. And she goes, her rap name is uh miami so is it a big deal with people when you basically put out a nickname and do you think it's disrespectful for someone that you don't know to call you by your government name it's funny to me at times because i noticed that for example the main people that do not like being called by their first name is because if they have this thug that nickname and then a government name is so proper and you know what I'm saying so off the so off the rail to the point where you be like, you don't even look like one of them type of people because the way your demeanor and the way you act, they be like, yeah, call me savage. And he be like, okay, Lenore. <laughs> okay, Wilbert. 
And it be just so funny to me because there are the people that get so upset when you call them by that government name. Now, Carisha is in the limelight and she's a celebrity. The only reason why anybody can type in your first name and or uh, type in your name, you know, look, I'm sorry. Anybody can go on Google and find your government name. So I remember listening to something and they was just like, well, can you really... Can you really get mad at fans for calling you by your first name? Can you really be upset with them? Or is it just something that comes with the territory? Like, yes, you want to be called Young Miami, but they might not feel like that. They might feel like they're close and personal to you. You see what I'm saying? Like, they feel like that, hey, I buy all your songs. I know all your, I know all your music. I know your ins and outs. I'm always looking at your life. The only thing that I have to say about that is that these artists, want to be on a personal level they do reality tv shows they always getting on live in their personal house around their kids posting their kids telling you details and information and then they get mad when you when you, when you get out here in the streets and you calling them by that government night what's up carisha girl and it's it's like they like what don't call me that because she said that if you call her that in the streets and she don't know you don't be offended when she look at you crazy or she annoy you. And you have to be careful when it comes down to that because these are the same people that are buying your albums. These are the same people that you're trying to relate to to make for sure that, you know, your album sells or they, that you're relatable. You can't ask to be relatable to these people and then turn around and you want to act like they're peasant or they're worsome. So I, I don't think it was a big deal. I personally don't think it's a big deal to call people by their first name because I'm going to let you know this now. Every dude that I probably have ever talked to, I'm calling you by your government name. Government name. I remember the last dude I was talking to, you know, he went by Sneaky. And oh my gosh, you might as well call his behind Sneaky. But um, he was definitely that. And then he went by another name. And it was so crazy because I never called him that. I didn't even feel comfortable because I was like, that's not the person that I know you from. I don't know you for being sneaky. That's something that you probably had in your past that people might know you from. But for as me, you know, like, uh, that's something that I don't feel comfortable calling you with. And I'm not going to call you. I'll tell you this now. Any dude that I talk to and mess with, I'm calling you by your government name. I'll call you by your government name. So uh, it's period. What's up, Wilbur? What's up, Lenard? What's up, you know, what's up, Hector? What's up, Braxton? You see what I'm saying? You can be like, dang, I'm pookie in the streets with us. Oh, well, they ain't in the streets and they ain't in the bed when you come up in this house. So I'm definitely calling people by that government name. But on a respect level, could that be considered disrespectful by you calling someone out their name? Now, the only people that I can honestly say that I probably will feel a certain type of way and I can understand that they feel a certain type of way is people that are considered juniors. Oh my gosh, I really am against people naming their kids a junior because I feel like that you don't give the kid any type of freedom. You see what I'm saying? Like you don't give the kid any type of freedom to be their self. So therefore, how can you name your son a junior and then turn around and their father is not active? Not because they're busy or they're busy providing or something tragic happened. They're not active, period. And they living out here in this world. So you have to definitely be mindful of that. I think those are the people that I can honestly separate and say, like if they feel disrespected about, they, uh, about you calling them by their government name, uh they can they can be an issue but yeah if you just be mindful because people will be petty if they feel like that you take it to heart too much they'll really be calling you by your your first name just to see like yeah what's up what's up with it so and so what's up with it lakeisha and you be like stop calling me that but uh yeah so what you guys opinion on that do you think that it's disrespectful for a person that don't know you personally to call you by your government name okay next topic Let's get into this topic about Little Nas. Little Nas had made a tweet. Let me get into it. He had did a tweet. He said, I hate speaking on my personal life, but y'all ends, you know, he said niggas, don't know how many nights I have cried myself to sleep feeling guilty because nothing I tried would help my mom. Hate me as the bad guy all you want. But at the end of the day, you don't know me outside of the internet. 
And what he was speaking on was the fact of his mother is still dealing with addiction. And someone, like I said, say, social media have took over to the point where everybody do everything for clout. Someone had noticed, or I think she either she was on the street, she was asking for money or whatever the situation was, but they recorded and then they let it be known like this is little Nas mama out here on the streets looking homeless. So of course they took it to social media and they made a big deal about it, you know, saying like, how can you sit up here and be, you know, y'all already on here worshiping the devil and you know you got all this money and you did this and did that but your mom is out here on addiction on drugs and begging for money now when i seen it like just by hearing it i was just like yeah that's wrong and stuff like that but we have to be considerate with people that's dealing with close family members. i have never had to deal with a family member or just you know a loved one someone that i was close with dealing with addiction you see what I'm saying? So I'm sorry with it. You see what I'm saying? I'm working on it, you guys. I'm so sorry. I just noticed it. I hate that when I be recording, I noticed that I say, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So I'm I'm growing. But anyways, yes, Um, you have to be mindful that when you don't know how stuff is, you cannot judge other people on. How can I judge this man on dealing with a close family member, which is his mother, dealing with her addiction problem when I never even experienced someone going through addictions. And from my understanding, he have tried. His father even came out and let it be known like he have tried. He has spent money. He has done everything. But like the saying say, you have to be ready to change. You see what I'm saying? You can sit up here and put and pour into this person all you can, but then they will still suck and burn you dry. And then people turn around and then they want to blame you. How can you have all that money and your mama out here on drugs or your daddy doing this and he'll act a holly? That's an addiction. You see what I'm saying? Half of us not even equipped to be able to deal with people with addiction. Because the, the only thing we know is to get them some help, pour some money into them, have them to spend a night and stuff like that. So if you ain't never dealt with a family member or a loved one dealing with addiction, please do not judge this young man because I know that, like he said up here and said, he is dealing with so much guilt because he is a superstar and he has all this money. And even in a better situation, his mom still chooses drugs. You don't know what type of things that this young man probably had to go through. And I have noticed the most successful people have a tragic story with their parents and they still love their parents unconditionally they still will give up everything you know just to make sure that their their mother or their father is happy and stuff like that so be mindful because kids that grow up with parents and stuff like that uh with addiction is sometimes the most giving person they just want to they just want that love and affection and their prettiness from their parents they want to be able to see them in a better state so keep it in your prayers what you what do you think about Dealing with people with addiction. Is it easy? Do you feel like he should have still, you know, still try and put the money in there? Or do you feel like that uh, it's not as easy as people say? It, you do have to get to the point where you have to cut ties with these people. So, yeah, that was it about little Nas. I just thought that was an interesting topic because I was like, wow, well, you know, he really, you know, they, he really took that to heart. So let's just be mindful when you guys are bashing people and talking about uh, uh, talking about them because he, if he's already been dealing with guilt, you know, just imagine what you say on the internet could really affect his mental uh, and stuff like that. Yes, his mom is going through stuff or whatever, but you have to remember too, a kid a kid is not responsible for taking care of their parents once they get older or to a certain point in their life. Our, uh, the, as a parent, we are the people that decided to have them and to provide and protect them. So, you know, like, yeah, don't be up here. I'm doing all this stuff because when you grow up, you better take care of me. Yeah, think about that. Okay, uh, last topic of today is T.I. Daughter. T.I. Daughter decided to speak out about a tweet that she had made a couple of, I want to say a couple of months ago. Anybody that knows T.I. and Tiny has basically been exposed for drugging lots of women, like basically bringing them to the house and, you know, they signing up for a threesome, this thing, you know, they wake up, they mouth sore, 
booty hole sore. They don't remember nothing. All they remember is T.I. talking about you want a drink, you want a Sprite, and next thing you know, he Bill Cosby and people. So, you know, they're already in the mix of going to court and trying to get, I want to say it was over 30 victims that came out trying to say that they basically was drugged. And the only reason why they did not come out anytime sooner is because they, don't get me wrong, like they set up and say, they signed up to have a threesome or they decided to have a threesome, but they wasn't coherent when it came down to having sexual activities. And I don't care what you separate and say, if anybody, the law is the law. Yes, you can agree to have intercourse with this person, but you telling me that if I already agreed to have sex with you, and then they say, no, you give me a drink and I'm at her, I'm woozy, I'm not coherent, I don't remember nothing, that is considered rape. In my point of view, that is considered rape because it's kind of like I wasn't even aware of what was done. And who's to say that half of the time they was the one who was messing with them? But I honestly think that the reason why they was doing that, yes, they probably had the girls to sign an NDA. And then on top of them signing the NDA, you know, they went ahead and proceeded to have threesomes with these uh, young ladies. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like, we well, only want you to get fly and try to leak something. So we just going to drug you so you can be out of there. Anyway, Deja Harris, which is T.I. daughter, she made a tweet and said this. This is going to sound super weird, but last night my pops woke me up around 5 a.m. asking if I wanted some juice. And when I set up, it literally felt as if I caught a chorley horse, but it was on the right side of my neck. Okay. Then she said, this isn't a normal thing. He just randomly came in and asked if I wanted uh, wanted juice. I was confused like shit, but I took it. <laughs> and, you know, she was doing the laughing emojis or whatever. Now, the reason why people are bringing this tweet back up, because, of course, when Deja tweeted this, this was probably like a couple of weeks before one of his ex-friends started exposing him about exposing both a tiny and CI about uh, basically drugging girls. And let's just be honest, T.I. also, this his same daughter, he has came out and said that he goes to her checkup, her annual women checkup, where they check in your vajayjay and everything else. And he wants the results like he's some type of pimp. So it was already a big thing back in the day when he first came out and said that. Now his same daughter is coming out saying that she caught a Charlie horse out the blue in the middle of the night and he was standing over her walking in the room with a cup of juice. Juice! This is the same juice that you have 15, 20 women claiming that he offered them something to drink and next thing you know he was at her. Now this girl told me she didn't woke up in pain and he was standing right there over her head telling me, hey, you want something to drink? Out of all things, no, my neck hurt. My neck, my back. I'm tired. Yeah, my neck and my back hurt. And you stand over me. I don't care who you is. Let me just be honest with you. I don't care who you is. I don't even like when I'm in a relationship and I'm laying down sleeping with a dude. And that's thing, you know, I wake up or I, you know, my eyes start kind of peeking at the, at two or three o'clock in the morning and you staring at me. What is you looking at? Now you gotta go. Cause I'm like, that ain't sexy. <laughs> that is creepy as heck. So uh, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that that was very weird? Because she came out and she was just saying like how it wasn't a big deal and people, since her dad been charged or whatever, that people are taking it to extreme and she feels like that if she would have said her mom was the one who was standing over her with the drink, it would have never been a big deal. You're right. But at the end of the day, let's go back up. You said that this might sound weird and it is sounding weird. It did sound weird. You knew that it wasn't right. That's the reason why you was like, it might sound weird, but I could be, I could be just overthinking it. But you took it to social media. That's why I don't understand when people take stuff to social media, then get mad when people take it another type of way. You felt some type of way. I don't know if that was a crumb drop to let it be known that you've been feeling a certain type of way with your dad ways or whatever. But it was already bad enough when he said he go up there and get your hymen check and he make sure that he's in there and he get the results before for you, like he's some type of pimp and he needs to make sure that you a okay and you ain't had sex. That was creepy. And that was an invasion of your privacy. Now you tell me you woke up in the middle of the night with a child the horse, your neck hurt and your back hurt. And he's standing over there, hey, baby, you want some juice? For what? So 
that's why people are outraged and they feel like that, hey, maybe these victims do have a point about T.I., you know, drugging him when he get him something to drink. His own daughter had made this post way before he was accused. So it's just ironic. It's a coincidence, of course. But uh, yes, that story shell and uh, shell kind of un, un, I'm sorry, that <laughs> subject definitely will be coming to light in the future. We'll see what will happen. You know, will the will the victims speak out? Would they have evidence? Would they have details? Because a lot of these women were saying that they didn't want to speak out because they was either prostitutes or they were strippers. And they did not want people to judge them on top of, you know, them having signing up to have a threesome with T.I. and Tiny. So it was kind of like they was like, well, I don't I don't really want to I really don't want to come out because I already know people going to say, well, you're a stripper, you're a prostitute. But it still does not make it right. Regardless of the fact, no one has the right to take advantage. No me, no. That goes for fellas and women. No me, no. Don't sit up here and if you feel like I'm going to give you the, the nookie anyway and you're going to pay me, then why do you feel the need to drug me? Then when I wake back up, that's very violating to sit up here and wake up and next thing you know, someone is uh basically saying like, hey, you know, it's time for you to go and you sore. You, how do you know that person wanted all that stuff done to them? They probably, you probably paid for a little head. <laughs> I'll just be honest. You probably paid for a little head. That's how you know you done gave it a drink. You done got down. Now why, why do my booty hole hurt? My mouth hurt? My eye hurt? My neck hurt? Everything's so on me. And you are pretty like, well, go ahead. You can go ahead and go. So I definitely think what you do to, to the dark come to light. Be very mindful. So yeah, let me know what you think about that subject with Deja coming out with that uh, tweet about her father. Do you think that that's a coincidence? Do you think that that's normal? Like, oh yeah, you know, her dad was standing over her with a drink of water. What's wrong with that? That's her dad. She loves her dad. A, a father can't do that. But, uh, or do you think that something could have been more of the situation? Because you have to understand, this is the same daughter that has basically let it be known that she deals with anxiety. She is very standoffish. You know, she she has spoke about these, like how she deals with mental health. So even when her dad came out and let it be known that, uh, yeah, she's still a virgin, which is not a bad thing, but he let it be known that she's not only a virgin, but I go to the doctors and, uh, you know, and I, I, I go with her and I'm the only person who goes with her to make sure that she's still a virgin. And they check everything on her. That is very creepy because, I mean, it's OK for a dad to be, you know, involved with his daughter and want to know stuff. But when it comes down to you even exposing your daughter sexually in a sexually way, whether it's innocent or not, whether she a virgin or not, that's not your place. You see what I'm saying? Like, give a person privacy. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Those was a couple of hot topics for today. Please like, share, comment, leave a review if you are on Spotify. I think it's a message button where you can leave a voicemail. And, you know, just let me know which topic that you want to talk about or which one that you want to give your opinion on. And I would love to hear from you guys. You guys have a good one. Mwah.